So the, today's agenda. First of all, uh, my idea is to give you a snapshot of our paper. So our paper in uh, 30 seconds, just to have an idea of what we are doing and what are uh, our main findings. And then uh, I will go in deep uh, through the paper, illustrating the motivation, the research question and contribution, our empirical context, main funding, and I will conclude uh, and uh, open uh, for discussion. So, uh, what we are going uh, to do in this paper? So, in a uh, few lines, essentially we are going to evaluate the impact of uh, an international mobility grant program on researcher careers. We find that the grant is effective in supporting a period of research abroad. So, this is a unique opportunity for a researcher to move. Those researchers uh, that didn't that apply and uh, didn't get uh, the funds uh, stay in, 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 the, in their country, in our case, Switzerland. Uh, for uh, awarded researchers, so awarded researchers increase their output quality, so we are looking at the impact factor of their paper, but uh, there is no effect on the output quantity and uh, on their career. So we find that uh, essentially researchers produce the same amount of paper and uh, they have no greater chance to get promoted as a professor. But why are we uh, looking at uh, this uh, issue? So essentially uh, there is a, a highly uh, skilled, so highly skilled mobility has increased considerably in the last decade. And uh, our institute is a well representation of uh, what is going on. I think that the majority of us experienced at least a mobility uh, experience. In my case, I was born in Italy, then uh, I moved to, to Switzerland, uh, United, then uh, the United States, I came back uh, to, to Switzerland, and finally uh, I, I end up uh, here in the Netherlands. And I guess that uh, all of us had a similar experience. Here I took uh, a nice quote from a paper that uh, appeared in Nature, uh, where they are claiming that knowledge generation and research is really a borderless enterprise. So while the uh, phenomenon of, of permanent scientific migration has often raised the political concern, uh, we talk about uh, brain uh, drain, mm, on the contrary, uh, several institutions like uh, the, um, the European Union, but also national institution, are uh, promoting and are investing a lot in uh, supporting temporal international mobility with the idea that uh, uh, temporal international mobility foster innovation. And here, uh, uh, for instance, I'm uh, reporting an example of uh, a well-known uh, um, fellowship initiative, the Marie Curie. So Marie Curie is uh, an initiative uh, promoted by uh, the European Union, and uh, uh, here uh, the European Union states clearly that uh, they are uh, sponsoring people, uh, talented scientists, to go abroad for a, a, period, for a temporal period uh, in order to uh, enhance career development and scientific networks. So one of the idea of going abroad is to enlarge uh, the network. So um, work temporarily in another uh, institution, so access to uh, greater resources and other uh, colleagues. So uh, while uh, there is an increasing presence of uh, this uh, mobility uh, uh, program, there is scarce uh, or limited uh, um, studies on their impact. And this is uh, uh, investigating their impact uh, is crucial, especially considering that uh, we are uh, living in a period of uh, uh, limited um, economic uh, resources. And uh, uh, also for the funding agency, it's crucial to see if uh, the money that they are investing is uh, invested in an efficient way or not. 
So um, with uh, this uh, motivation in mind, uh, we came up uh, uh, with uh, the following research question. We are asking, <coughs> what is the effect uh, of uh, receiving uh, financial support uh, for international mobility? And uh, uh, what uh, we are looking at uh, is a population of uh, young uh, researchers. And so in terms of uh, outcome to evaluate uh, uh, the efficacy of uh, this grant, uh, we are looking at their productivity in terms of uh, quantity, so the number of paper uh, produced, and in terms of quality, uh, where uh, these papers are published. So essentially we are looking if, uh, at the impact factor of the journal uh, where this paper uh, appears. We are looking at their career, and uh, when I, I, I talk about career, I mention the fact, we are looking at the fact if they are not uh, promoted as a professor. And finally, uh, we are looking also at, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the mode of uh, knowledge production. And in particular, we are looking at uh, their uh, co-authorship uh, uh, network. As I said uh, before, one of the objectives <coughs> of uh, uh, this uh, um, kind of uh, um, funding schema is uh, to enlarge uh, the, network, uh, the network of uh, uh, these scholars. So uh, essentially we wanted to learn more about uh, a specific instrument, uh, an instrument supported mobility, and we wanted to learn more also about uh, the impact of the mobility experience. So our contribution, uh, we add uh, to the literature on uh, public funding. So the literature on public funding, so the literature that essentially assess the impact of public funding on uh, researcher productivity is uh, vast, but uh, is mainly uh, based on uh, generic research grant. There are some studies that uh, consider a peculiar research grant, so a research grant with a specific goal, and uh, specifically, for instance, Han Khan and uh, Mark Harvey are looking at a similar project, program, the uh, Fulbright program, that uh, maybe some of you know about it, is a program uh, sponsor mobility, sponsoring mobility in the States. Uh, what uh, uh, they do is uh, similar to what, uh, uh, to, to what we are doing, but uh, um, they suffer of uh, some data constraint. In particular, they have access only to uh, awarded people. So what we have, and the advantage of our uh, study, is the fact that uh, we have uh, access to uh, all the applicants, so the population of researchers that apply, and part of them get and the, the, the funds, and the part of them uh, not. And uh, moreover, we had access also uh, to the uh, score that uh, they get uh, uh, for their application. And this uh, was uh, uh, crucial in, uh, because uh, it gave us uh, the possibility to establish uh, the causal relationship between uh, obtaining the grant and uh, the outcome. And uh, with respect to the other study, we uh, consider also a broad range of outcomes. In their case, uh, previous studies, uh, for instance, uh, consider, consider mainly um, the, the productivity of uh, those scientists in terms of uh, pure number of uh, publication. Uh, we are looking also at their career, so we, um, we retrieve their, their CV and uh, <coughs> we are looking uh, also, for instance, if they get a professorship or not. So, so they are all yes. postdocs? They are all, all postdocs. So this uh, is uh, a grant, the, the, name, the, the label of the grant is Advanced <coughs> Postdoc Mobility. Mm -hmm. So not only uh, postdoc, but they need to have at least one year of experience as postdoc. So they can't be assistant professors already? No, they cannot, exactly. Uh, so the idea of uh, this uh, uh, grant uh, is uh, to sponsor the period between uh, the PhD postdoc and uh, uh, the professorship. 
So as an uh, uh, empirical context, uh, we consider uh, uh, this advanced uh, postdoc mobility fellowship uh, is uh, a fellowship uh, uh, promoted by uh, the Swiss National Science Foundation. The Swiss National Science Foundation uh, is uh, the national uh, public <coughs> funding agency in uh, Switzerland. Is, uh, it is playing uh, the same role as uh, the National Science Foundation in, uh, in the States. Uh, <coughs> this, uh, uh, fund the Swiss National Science Foundation has uh, uh, two kinds of uh, uh, programs. One program is uh, sponsoring uh, uh, individual projects. Uh, so is addressed uh, to, to professor. The other uh, kind of programs uh, are uh, um, sponsoring uh, uh, careers, so they are addressed to uh, PhD and uh, postdoc. There are two uh, kind of uh, uh, mobility uh, fellowship. One for, uh, uh, is called early mobility and is uh, for uh, uh, PhD students. This one is uh, for postdoc. Uh, we have uh, we had access uh, uh, to both uh, um, the set of uh, uh, fellowship. We uh, did uh, our investigation on this one. Since for this one uh, we had uh, uh, more fine grade information about uh, uh, the score. So for for this uh, for this uh, uh, kind of fellowship uh, we get access uh, uh, to um, to the formal score. Um, the, other, the other program uh, is sponsoring a PhD and the evaluation is made in-house uh, by the individual university. Uh, this, uh, um, so there is not a formal uh, score, there is just uh, a discussion among the professor uh, about who is getting or not the fellowship. So the idea is, uh, so each of the applicant need uh, to specify in uh, their proposal uh, the, the project that they have uh, in mind and uh, uh, they, they have to, to claim in the proposal uh, where they intend uh, to go and they need also to have uh, an invitation letter by the institution. So usually the quality of the institution and uh, especially the fit uh, uh, between uh, the, inst the group, uh, the lab, uh, the, uh, the host lab uh, and their project uh, is one of uh, the criteria that enter in the evaluation. Uh, they, uh, this kind of grant uh, support uh, with, a, with a salary uh, the fellow uh, for uh, um, a period that goes from one year to uh, three years. Um, the evaluation process is centralized uh, in Bern, uh, the capital of uh, Switzerland, and uh, the base of the Swiss National Science Foundation. And uh, so and it, uh, the evaluation uh, is working like uh, the evaluation that uh, we have uh, for, uh, um, uh, for a journal. So uh, essentially there are uh, two uh, evaluations by external reviewer. <coughs> Then uh, they are uh, um, the two evaluation are. Uh, um, then there is a commission that uh, act uh, like an editor of a journal and assign the, uh, the the final score. So the final score is quite fine grade uh, on a scale uh, that goes uh, from A to D with uh, intermediate uh, uh, score, so there is, uh, for instance, B plus, uh, B minus, etc. At the end of the day, we end up, <coughs> we end up uh, with uh, uh, seven uh, different uh, grades. So um, our idea is, uh, so this uh, is to, um, to uh, evaluate the, the impact of, uh, of uh, this grant. And to do that, uh, we uh, extracted we, we looked uh, also for the CV of uh, the people that uh, participate to this program. And uh, here uh, we have uh, one guy, uh, Thomas uh, Simon, that got uh, a fellowship of two years. He spent uh, two years uh, in, uh, in Australia and uh, finally uh, he got uh, uh, the professorship and he has also um, an amazing uh, list of publications. Um, other, but not all uh, the people had uh, the same destiny, <laughs> let's say. And here is uh, Stefan, he got uh, the same kind of grant. 
uh, he spent uh, two years uh, in the States, in California, and uh, in a biotech, uh, um, in, to, to study biotech, and he came back uh, to Switzerland and he went to, to industry. So let's say that uh, we, we are observing a lot of uh, heterogeneity uh, within uh, our cell. So, uh, just to give you a better idea of uh, uh, our data, um, we consider um, um, about more than uh, 1,000 uh, uh, applications over a period of uh, eight years, from uh, 2003 to uh, 2011. And uh, so on one side, the Swiss National Science Foundation, so the agency provided us uh, the information about uh, the application and the score and some uh, basic uh, demographic uh, information. Uh, we integrated this information with uh, their uh, publication records, so collected from, from Scopus. And uh, um, we uh, manually collected also uh, the CV, so we used, um, uh, for, uh, for the people that stay in academia, uh, we found their CV on uh, their official uh, web page. For the remaining, uh, LinkedIn was a great source of uh, that information. So uh, our final sample was about, uh, we, may, uh, we lost, uh, uh, 47 cases uh, uh, since uh, we were not able to retrieve uh, key uh, information and we end up uh, with uh, more 1,132 uh, applications. Um, it's important to, to notice also that uh, uh, we, uh, these applications are spread uh, in, uh, in different, uh, these 77 67 are uh, the distinct uh, evaluation committee. So th they are different court uh, over <coughs> these uh, eight years. Uh, usually uh, you have uh, uh, two com uh, the commission meet uh, two times uh, per year to evaluate uh, the application. Um, here are uh, some descriptive statistics to, to give a feeling of uh, uh, our applicants. So they are uh, not, uh, they are, uh, uh, let's say, junior researcher. In fact, uh, their average age is uh, uh, 34. Um, so uh, we, when we refer to foreign, we distinguish between being, a Swiss, uh, being Swiss and not uh, being Swiss. So we have 26% uh, 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 of the applicants are non-Swiss. Uh, one of the criteria, uh, one of the requirements to apply for this kind of grant is to be Swiss or to have uh, worked uh, in Switzerland for at least three years or to have a Swiss uh, PhD degree. Um, then uh, there are, uh, uh, let's say, um, good scholars. In effect, uh, their average uh, um, publication uh, uh, is a seven, and also in terms of citation, they have uh, quite a lot of uh, citation, 32, and also the average journal impact factor is quite high. Also in terms of uh, co-authorship uh, uh, network, uh, um, also at the application time, they have a quite uh, um, uh, extent, uh, uh, large uh, um, uh, co-authorship network. I have to say that uh, uh, these uh, numbers uh, are due also to the fact uh, that, uh, uh, the, let's say, the 70% of them are uh, working in hard science. So they are slightly different from uh, our case, that social science, uh, where we tend to publish uh, uh, less and to have uh, uh, smaller uh, networks. When is this measured? Is it at the time of application? At the, this is at the time of the application, yes. Or the, the entire career up to two years of postdoc? Exactly, exactly. Uh, in terms of uh, destination, the um, most favorite uh, destination are US, UK, a lot of them uh, target uh, Germany, France. Uh, so these are the four 
uh, main uh, destination. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, um, outcomes that we are looking to, uh, we look uh, first of all to uh, the fact that uh, uh, the, um, the people go or not abroad. And uh, we observe uh, this uh, one year after <coughs> the application and five years uh, later the application. And also, in terms of other outcomes, uh, we look at the uh, publication, uh, average journal impact factor, professorship, uh, within a period of five years. Um, we, uh, we did that uh, since uh, the, our last court uh, is uh, uh, 2011. Uh, for uh, uh, we 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 did also a second set of analysis for the for the first court so 2008 to 2009 uh, where we are uh, extended uh, extending this period and the results are almost stable uh, also extending the period and then we look also at uh, the new uh, authors always uh, looking at five years. So we look uh, uh, at the, uh, in terms of outcome measure, we look at the new co-authorship and uh, we look also at uh, uh, the quality of uh, these uh, new co-authors. So um, we look uh, at uh, where the co-authors uh, are publishing. Then uh, we look, uh, um, we consider uh, self-references five years. So our idea was to look, uh, to consider if uh, those uh, uh, researchers um, continue to, um, to work on the same stuff or if they extend uh, their uh, topics. And one way to measure uh, this was to look at uh, the proportion of uh, self-references in their paper. Our idea is that uh, if uh, I uh, cite myself in one paper, it means that this paper is very close, is a follow-up or in, is in the same topic of what I did in the past. So this is why we consider uh, this measure. And uh, another outcome that uh, we are looking uh, to is uh, um, at the journal impact factor, so where I'm going to publish, but uh, excluding uh, the host uh, institution. It could be the case that, uh, for instance, uh, it could be the case that someone goes to Harvard and then uh, all of the, let's say, uh, <coughs> publications are uh, um, related uh, to having an Harvard, an Harvard affiliation. So we clean up uh, for, uh, for this. Uh, um, looking only at the publication that uh, do not mention the host uh, institution. So, um, before I, I say to you that, uh, um, I mentioned to you the fact that uh, the main challenge of this kind of analysis is the fact that uh, usually people that get the grant are also uh, better quality people. And this uh, was our case. Here we have the comparison between uh, uh, awarded and unawarded. <coughs> if you look uh, <coughs> at uh, the publication, for instance, uh, we can see that uh, at the application time, uh, awarded applicants have uh, a larger number of publications um, with uh, um, more citation and they are also publishing in a uh, better uh, journal. So this is the problem. So uh, essentially, yes, the funding agency is uh, giving the money to this guy, but uh, this guy are uh, better than the other. Than the other. So it, uh, it could be natural that uh, they have also a better uh, chance for the future. So regardless, uh, uh, the amount of the grant received. So we needed uh, uh, to isolate the effect of uh, uh, the grant, regardless of their quality. And what we did 
he was uh, to apply a regression discontinuity design. So essentially, uh, <coughs> with this method, uh, you can uh, compare, uh, so the ideal setting would be uh, an experiment. So you random, randomly assign money to people. This uh, cannot be always possible. So this is uh, uh, what is called a uh, uh, semi-experiment design. And uh, essentially, also in this case, uh, exploiting, exploiting uh, the fact that uh, we had the score of the application, we had the possibility to compare two individuals that uh, uh, differ only for the fact that one individual get the grant and the other didn't get the grant. So essentially, <coughs> uh, what, uh, uh, so um, how many of uh, you know about uh, the result, the this <coughs> kind of uh, method? Yes, uh, you don't count. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, uh, essentially, uh, what happened is that uh, so here. Uh, okay. Here, uh, just to give you an idea of uh, the basic, uh, um, the base of, uh, of this method. Here you have the rating, and here you have uh, the outcome. So here you have uh, the rating that is assigned uh, to, to the applicant. And uh, at a certain point, uh, there is uh, a cutoff. So it's like uh, when uh, you pass or fail an exam, that uh, six uh, is uh, the cutoff. And uh, at, the, uh, at the cutoff, uh, there are people that uh, uh, get uh, uh, the grant and people that uh, doesn't get the, the grant. And what we can assume is that uh, here in the middle, this, this guy are very similar to this guy. So the fact that uh, it's like to say that uh, if you get uh, 5.9 in an exam and you fail, and if you get uh, 6, uh, the, the 0 0.1 is bad luck, let's say. So uh, these people are treated. And uh, what we are going to observe um, with this methodo methodology, we are going uh, to observe uh, what is the gain, comparing two individuals with the same quality, what is uh, the um, gain in uh, uh, obtaining the grant. So we are met. While uh, with the descriptive statistics, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, observing uh, an average individual here and here, and uh, we are not uh, controlling, let's say, for the quality of uh, the individual, with uh, this methodology, we are uh, observing, uh, um, we are comparing two individuals at the cutoff. So two individuals with the same quality, and we are isolating the effect of the treatment. Um, do you have more or less the intuition? <laughs> Question marks. So uh, in this scenario, for instance, uh, there is an instrument. Uh, there is uh, no effect for the treatment because uh, you see a linear uh, trend. Here you have uh, the effect of a treatment. And uh, in our case, uh, uh, this uh, was uh, the distribution of uh, uh, our grade. So um, essentially, we had a cutoff. Uh, here, uh, OK, the grades are normalized. Uh, and uh, the cutoff is around uh, the score that is B, that we normalized as 0. So if uh, you get uh, a B, uh, you have uh, the uh, almost the 80% of getting the, gra the, um, the grant. If uh, uh, you get uh, uh, a grade below B, uh, you have a, a much lower uh, chance to get uh, the, uh, the grant. So, main finding. Allora, first, uh, first of all, uh, we looked uh, at uh, uh, the mobility experience. So again, uh, considering uh, um, the previous schema, 
here we have the same uh, plot where um, we, so we consider, first of all, uh, being abroad after one year. And here we see a discontinuity. So this means that uh, people that get uh, this kind of uh, uh, grant had a greater chance to, uh, to be abroad after one year. And this is confirmed also here in the, in the statistics where we applied a fuzzy RDD. So essentially, uh, a guy that uh, gets a grant has uh, the 47% greater chance to be abroad in the first year. Interesting, we observe that uh, these uh, people uh, tend to uh, come back. So this is a grant that uh, is effective in sponsoring a temporal mobility that, uh, does, that uh, not necessarily became a permanent uh, mobility. When we look, uh, in fact, uh, five years later, later we see that uh, this percentage reduced to 24% and is likely significant. So after five years, the 25% of people um, are on average abroad with respect to the other. But, but uh, this percentage is going down over years. And uh, for the court of uh, people where we were able to consider seven years, we found that, uh, for instance, after seven years, this uh, significance disappeared. So, uh, scientific productivity. So, uh, looking at, interesting, looking at the pure number of publication, we see that uh, this kind of grant has no impact. So, essentially, people that uh, uh, get uh, uh, a greater score tend to have a, a better chance to get the grant, but then when they get the grant, the grant makes no difference in uh, in how many uh, publications they are uh, uh, obtaining. Uh, this grant favors uh, the quality uh, of the publication, so where you are going to publish. Professorship, we find no result. Um, so this kind of grant is not giving you a higher chance to become a professor. But interestingly, uh, these uh, grants uh, are promoting new collaboration. So what we find uh, essentially is that uh, people that go abroad, for them it's easier to access uh, to new contacts, and for them it's also easier to, ask, uh, to access to uh, better quality code. This is another uh, uh, important information. We get. Um, here, uh, let's say another robustness check to, uh, to see if uh, uh, this uh, result on uh, the average impact factor was only connected to the host institute, to the quality of the host institution or not. And we find that uh, no, there is uh, some learning effect. If uh, also only if uh, we consider uh, simply the publication uh, without uh, the uh, host institution as uh, affiliation, uh, even uh, for this publication, they appear in better, uh, in better journal. Um, then, uh, what else? This also is an important result. Um, for us, uh, it was important to distinguish the effect of uh, mobility versus money. So, uh, the results that we are finding are, uh, um, depend on the fact that the guy gets the money or on the fact that the guy uh, moves. Here, uh, we cannot uh, disentangle the two effects uh, perfectly since uh, uh, the money came uh, simultaneously with uh, the mobility experience. What we did was to try several, uh, several experiments. And what uh, we tried, for instance, was to um, split the sample 
and to distinguish uh, the applicant that uh, uh, or what were awarded for the first time by the applicant that uh, uh, got already um, uh, this, uh, a similar kind of grant in the past. And what we find is that uh, essentially our uh, results are uh, mm, stronger, are, uh, are stronger for the people that uh, move for the first time. So this, in a certain sense, uh, uh, lead us to think that uh, in our case, it's not the money, but it's the, the mobility that uh, uh, has an effect. I have to say also that uh, these grants uh, are not so rich. So essentially, you get the money to survive abroad, but uh, you, you don't uh, save too much. Uh, so essentially, this uh, uh, wrap up uh, uh, what, uh, what uh, our um, our main finding, and um, so again, um, this kind of grant, uh, the main impact uh, is on networking, and um, in our opinion, uh, the results are uh, uh, more connected to the mobility than uh, to the money. Um, of course, uh, um, our work, as uh, all the work, has some limitation. We are considering uh, a quite uh, rich context. We are considering Switzerland. Maybe if uh, we uh, would have considered a country with uh, a lower amount of resources, I'm, uh, I can say my experience being Italian, uh, maybe our result uh, could be uh, could have been different, uh, especially in the rate of uh, return. So, uh, being Italian, for instance, I can see I can see <laughs> that uh, if you get the chance to move abroad, then uh, is le is less probable that uh, you you go back to your country. Um, as a future. Uh, a future extension of uh, this research, we would like to investigate uh, not only what are the effects uh, on the individual, but what are the effects of uh, uh, the institutions. So what are the effects, uh, for instance, for the uh, host institution and from uh, the, uh, the, the institution where uh, the, the applicant origin from. Um, it would be interesting to see, for instance, uh, if uh, uh, to send, uh, if I'm a uh, EPFL, so if I'm a Swiss institution, and I'm sending some of my students to MIT, it would be interesting uh, to see uh, how, for instance, uh, the co-authorship uh, between uh, the two institutions vary over time. Okay, I think that uh, my time is over. So thank you so much for your attention and uh, I'm open uh, to your question, uh, especially maybe because uh, each of us had this kind of experience and so maybe some of your questions could be related to your experience. Thank you. <laughs>